Okay, everyone, we're gonna go ahead and start this UOCA meeting. It's just gonna be a round table discussion about abatements, what your agency does or doesn't do, and uh, see if we can get a consensus on best practices. I know there's a couple agencies looking to add that program. Who, who's had some successes? Who would like to start? Hey, Gabe, would you mind muting yourself real quick? Thank you. Well, I can tell you Sandy City does abatements. We do quite a few of them. <laughs> Mark, do you guys go through an ALJ judge or other? Oh, we, what, what, we, we have a contract. Uh, guy that puts it through a city bid process um, to board house, cut grass, uh, tree trimming stuff. Yes, <clears throat> my questions would be because I'm trying to set it up for Tool County, they don't have anything in place. So at the city, we did like RFPs and then we, we got the lowest one for for multiple abatements, right? Cars, weeds, trash, whatever. Um, and then we would put them on like a three-year contract in a rotation. So is that something that everybody else does or is there an easier way to do it? That's, that's kind of like what Sandy does. Sandy does a one-year contract, but we only had one person put in for it for the last couple of years. So he gets a contract every time. Nice. Our process is just uh, through a violation notice. We'll, we'll Send out one violation notice. Um, obviously, if they don't respond to that, we'll give them another violation notice. If after the second one they don't respond, then one of our options is an abatement. We can go and um, have him cut the weeds or do whatever the abatement requires, and then he'll send us a bill. And then what we'll do is we'll add an administration fee on that, and then they'll put it. They'll send the property owner the bill, and if the property owner ignores it, they'll send it to the county recorder and I'll put a tax lien on the property. So that's the way we do it. Yeah, that's that's pretty much how Tool City's done it in the past. Um, just wondering how to set it up. So um, do you guys get warrants and stuff at that point too? No. Most of the abatements that we do are abandoned properties. Um, and or businesses and they we don't go inside or do anything inside it's just exterior stuff that we'll bait mostly it's just weeds we've got a couple dead trees we've had to pull down and um boarded up a business once that type of stuff and we've never had a, we've never gotten a lot of food. is there anyone here from south salt lake i know they they also do abatements and they sometimes get warrant, um, but I haven't worked with them for a few years, so I don't know the details anymore. Yeah, we, we're here, uh, South Salt Lake. Uh, let me turn on my video. We also just hired Arthur, brand new, second day. He comes from Hawaii. Um, yes, we do the NOV. Um, we can get warrants and then we have uh, for abatements um, our ALJ, ALJ judge um, uh, will send us uh, the briefing, the, uh, the information where we can then send out and get three um, bids for that abatement. But um, I'm actually very interested in hearing what some others are doing and uh, we have such a small budget here that sometimes it feels like I need to go home and get my own rake and shovel for those abatements. But, um, and we have trouble with, we're, right now we're working on uh, an abatement with two RVs and we're having trouble finding any towing service that will take those RVs. It's just too expensive. They have nowhere to put it. It takes up land um that's a real struggle for us a couple of things uh one on the rv thing we're having a similar problem 
uh, our administration is process trying something new where um, if we can't get anybody to come out and pick up these junk motorhomes, if we, if we find somebody that will, as an incentive to do that, we will put them on the top of the rotation list for three consecutive years. <laughs> um, I, I have another question too on the abatements. Uh, does anybody have any statistics on how much I assume that every assume the city has to pay out on these things because I'm, I'm sure that people aren't paying these things off when they when we send a bill for the abatement, and yeah, it goes to a lien, but I guess we don't get any money on the lien until you know the so the house is sold. So that's kind of one of our city's biggest concerns. Is what's everybody's take on that as far as you know how much it's costing to to do these programs? Uh, I have. A couple of uh, actually a few that I've worked on and gotten success with through the ALJ. Um, with those, I get a judge's order to enter the property and upon a uh, reasonable notice of entry of the property, I can go in and abate the uh, uh, according to the ALJ order. Uh, I've done this with a weed issue uh, and I use the city maintenance people, uh, our regular public works to do a weed uh, removal of a residential property. Um, and we attach the property owner for the uh, value of the uh, the next one was a uh, a hoarder that retained property over a period of years, and we've got an ALJ order. We did the same thing through the process of notice and gave them a 10-day uh, notice of show up for abatement. Uh, they just that person said, well, I can't do it. Just go ahead and do it, which didn't hurt us. And that one went into the thousands. Uh, the city stood for the cost of it. However, we got reimbursed through the uh, filing the tax lien with the county recorder. Uh, we've done that a couple. I've done that a couple of times here at the city and it has worked out. I have another one coming up, which I will not participate in, but I'm sending the notice out today. Uh, that's one of my final uh, things I'm going to do today is get that notice sent for that particular property. So we've had success with the ALJ uh, civil system. It works well. Now, but you say you filed the lead and got paid that way. I, I, is somebody paying these liens off before the property is sold? No, uh, that will stay on the property until such time as it changes hands, either a bank repossession or a uh, uh, transaction where the house or property is sold or conveyed to another person. In other words, if they give it to a uh, relative as a gift, it still has to be satisfied before it uh, is recorded. Hey, Randy. Randy, I, I think it depends on the type of lien that you use. I know with the cases we have, if, if somebody doesn't comply and a case goes to default, um, at first we put a property lien on, on their property. And then if they continue not to bring the property into compliance and we have to abate something at that point, if we abate um, what we use at that point is a tax lien. So there, there's two different types of liens. The property lien will stay with the property until sold or they, or they fix the problem. Um, a tax lien, the way I understand it, would come due with the next year's property taxes and it would be paid at that time. So, oh, and as I understand it that way is, you know, people will pay like their property um, taxes or something and then not know that there's a fine there. So what happens with, with ours is that the payments go towards any liens first. And so they get paid 
those first and then they'll have to pay their property taxes. So a lot of people don't find out until later, then they get in trouble for late tax, late taxes. But that's how the city has gotten paid first. Is those get paid as priority. I know West Jordan has uh, Brock Hudson over there who manages that, has a great success with uh, his ALJ system. Has anybody talked with him? Okay. Uh, St. George had uh, a system in place where they were using the uh, city attorney, who's Paula Houston, uh, to do their abatements as well as their lanes. Uh, she was having success there taking care of that for the code officers that went to her. She actually is an attorney that works for Washington County and takes care of the uh, county uh, situation there for their uh, abatements. Uh, they did have one thing. It was a... Uh, if I recall, it was a uh, constitutionalist that sued the county over the abatement. Uh, I don't know how that came out. I have not talked to her since that case was initiated. So I don't know. I, I don't know if the uh, constitutionalist met with success or the county did. Uh, but those usually take a lot of time to resolve anyway. So I never followed up on that. See, in reading through the chat, it looks like Taylorsville City's process is similar to Sandy's. They also use tax liens on properties to get the money. And, the, and Randy, getting back to your story, the money that Sandy has is a line item that the city council puts in our abatement account every year. I think it runs like about 25 grand. I don't think we ever use that much, but it's always there. Okay, so you have a line item for that in your budget then? Yes, and then it all it, it, it kind of self-sustains itself because when we get paid, it just goes back in there. Or that's the theory. That's one of the struggles I had here in Saratoga Springs. Just recently, we did an abatement, uh, an abatement earlier this year, and we had never done one here before. So the the city code and our operations manual, SOPs and stuff, laid it out, but not in any great detail. Basically, just said once you get the administrative judge's order, you can go do an abatement, but it doesn't say who's paying for it, where the money comes from, any processes. It just says, once you get it, you can go do it. So there was some confusion from the city attorney's office here in our city between what my previous experience was, was here's how it's laid out. They didn't wanna do it that way. Some honest discussion happened and we, we were able to sort it out. Um, the, the big kicker for us was who's going to pay for it. And part of our city code specifically says that the code official, myself, building, whoever, ha can use public works like what Kurt was saying, or I don't remember, somebody was saying that they use uh, their public works to help yeah. or go to uh, an outside vendor. Well, the city attorney flat out said that's wrong in our code. We will never use public works or any other city employees to, to perform an abatement, basically for the same reason that we're never going to get paid back for it and to spend taxpayer dollar on residential property for something we're never going to get paid back for. They had a real hard time with that. So they, they asked me to go out and try and get, try to get three bids minimum pick the low bid, obviously, and then perform the abatement. In this particular case, the abatement went off without a hitch. Um, they had some other issues we won't go into. Um, they were at, at the end of the abatement, which I've never had happen, and I think it's probably first time sh I should get a plaque for this. They were actually thanking me for performing the abatement, the homeowners were, um, because they had issues that they couldn't deal with on their own. 
Um, luckily, we were able to get paid back uh, because they wanted to discuss their additional fines that had accrued with the administrative judge. And he agreed to let them come in and talk about that at the next administrative hearing. Um, he, he eliminated all their additional fines that had accrued to about $5,000 worth of additional fines if they could pay the $1,200 abatement cost that same day and as court. They agreed, he dropped the fines, they paid it. The city got our money back, everybody's happy, the property's cleaned up. So it, it was really the best outcome for all involved. The city got our money back, they got their property cleaned up. So, I mean, they don't always go like that though. Um, in chat, Mill Creek said they are the same as far as abatement fund. It's a line item that the city council votes on every year. That, that was the hard part for, for Saratoga, never having done one before. There was no line item uh, in a budget anywhere. Um, I work under the planning department, so there was, I am the one and only code official other than the building official. Uh, for the entire city. So there is no budget, there is no line item. So there was a lot of discussion as far as, do we need to put it on a city council agenda to amend the budget to get money? Do we need to just pay it out of some budget someplace so that we can do it? And my boss was very much against paying out of his planning department budget only because it's that small anyways. And so a, a 1200 or $1,500 hit to that is a big chunk of change for such a small department. We have six employees total and I'm the only code official. So, um, you know, for a small department of six people total, including myself, and you're gonna take a $1,500 hit to that when really it covers salary and gas for my vehicle, you know, that was a bit, that was, a, that was hard for everybody to swallow. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Christina, do you recall when we worked together years ago? I know it seems like a million years ago. We had that recurring abatement at that one abandoned property. How would something like that get resolved? Do you remember that? It was just south of City Hall. The lady had disappeared. Nobody could get a hold of her. The state was on her. The feds were on her. The, the best that I can um, remember is that it was, it had, the bill hadn't been paid and the city council just renewed what the budget line item was every year with the understanding that we may not get this money back, but these properties have to get abated because they're dangerous. All right. That was the one that kind was of a, a hit. Yeah. That was the one that was boarded up and well, that was yeah. in. Spencer City. I don't know if that's still ongoing now or if that was resolved. Um, I don't know if if you know anything about that. I think uh, it was on, was it on Haven? Was that the street was, name Haven? Was it one street south of City Hall there? Well, we, yeah, we're working at uh, 244 Whitlock. Is that, does that sound familiar? That sounds that familiar. Okay. One street south of City Hall and it, mm -hmm. it was like a blue house, real right. small yard. Did yeah, that ever get resolved and how did that ever get resolved if it did? It's it's not resolved. We're still working on it. But one interesting thing, you probably re remember Anduong and 3645 South 500. Uh, we cited her. I went to her uh, house and introduced myself and basically said, I don't ever do this, but if you order a city dumpster, I'll come after hours and help load that thing up. This is a mess. She didn't do it. We uh, ended up citing two properties she had on that street. We abated them both. And now she's in the hole for $40,000 worth of fines. So it was a big hit. And, you know, administrative citations are our only recourse. So we want compliance. We're not a profit center, but, um, you know, we have, we have very stubborn people out there. She was actually, during the abatement, she was taking sacks of trash and bringing it into the house, saving the trash. So um, 
yeah, that was quite an experience. But um, no, we haven't resolved 244 Whitlock yet. I, I was just curious because that was ongoing before my time there. And I know. Yeah. That, that was that was ongoing. So I, I'm just I was just curious because I'm sure that bill. Let's see, it's been at least three years since right. I left there, and it was before. So I mean, I I can't imagine the astronomical. I know. You might as well mm -hmm. just cut the losses and just move on at that point. I mean, yeah. it's so they're never going to pay it. They're, the house isn't worth it. I'm sure the house is half fallen down by now. It's it's in pretty bad shape. I think South Salt Lake's the poster child for what you're talking about. But uh, yeah. yeah, we we. Do. Uh, am I on or not? Mm -hmm. Hello. We we can hear you. Oh, okay. I can't tell who's on. Um, I had a property here that I uh, filed a case on and had a order of abatement and the abatement came to $110,000 and the city elected to support the abatement. Wow. And the city manager said because of the, it was a commercial property and they decided to go ahead with it. And just before uh, we moved to get the abatement organized, the property owner uh, cut a deal with another buyer and with the judge, we had an order to show cause and the judge allowed them to abate the property themselves after the order was issued. In other words, he gave them an extension essentially and the property was abated. So sometimes you can meet success uh, at that value, the city uh, being willing to stand for 110 was way beyond my wallet capability, I can tell you that. But I've had lesser ones that uh, I get just as much fight with, believe me. There's also a new case out of Florida. Uh, I'll look it up. I don't have it with me right now, but uh, it is the Supreme Court decision that the uh, Florida case, they could not levy any unreasonable fines or abatement costs. And out of that, Florida City at the time, over a five-year period, took in $3.5 million in fines. Uh, that's a substantial amount in my book anyway. Uh, when you take in $5 million in fines from the code enforcement department in a five year period, that's a little, I can see why the Supreme Court said it was unreasonable. Uh, so when you start looking at abatements and fines, you may wanna look that case up and make sure that we don't exceed that. That's one of the reasons that uh, the state of Utah passed a law that you can only find $1,000 maximum for the infraction of a code violation. So keep that in mind when you're looking at abatements and fines that it also requires it to be reasonable. Uh, there was a question in the chat about safety um, when it when it's time to abate. Uh, Taylorsville asked if anyone's experienced uh, safety issues where the property owners confront the cleaners. Um, looks like Mill Creek said they have officers stand by, as does Tooele and Saratoga when they do abatements. As well as North Salt Lake, yes. I know when I was in West Valley as a police officer in West Valley, we did stand by for abatements there as well. At any time, because I don't work with the police department that much, any time, especially if I have uh, even a compliance inspection, that's exactly what happened with Jill. I don't have a police radio. I'm not tied to dispatch. Nobody knows where I go other than my phone and the body camera that I had to purchase on my own, I had, and my own wits and my own resources. I don't have any city resources. So yeah, I, I call the police department. And if they're available, 
I'll I'll ask him to come out. Yeah, I, I would recommend having an officer stand by if you if you feel like this resident's going to be argumentative or get upset. Um, that's just it's just smart to cover your bases. I think you're right. I think a civil stand or an abatement standby, no matter how you look at it, if they show up, spend the time, the cost and the safety is well worth it. And it has to be done and should be done. I think our safety officers, uh, our training department, I know Christine has that on, or we scheduled that at one time. Uh, and we used Alex to give information on safety on calls. I really, really support that and think that should happen on any abatement. Doesn't matter what it is or how friendly you are with the person there. You never know who the sympathizer, sympathizer might be. Could be a neighbor. It could be a non-related person. It's just always better to have a standby. That's my opinion. On a related, but I don't want to get off on a strange tangent here and get away from abatements, but is anybody else, uh, so I'm attending that code officer safety training that we emailed everybody about, was a month or two months ago, whatever it was, is anybody else attending those, that series of five training courses? Yeah, I, I am. I'm, go I'm going to. Yeah. I mean, the, the, they've only done the first class so far. It's one class a month, but. They, they showed some videos during that first one that it was very telling. And if anybody's not aware, you really need to go check out their website. And I mean, I'm not pimping for them or anything, but they really do have some cool things on there. They've got some very interesting resources and it, it's amazing. I would have never thought in this profession that the numbers of people that are assaulted, murdered, whatever, it's its crazy. There's a lot more out there, I'm sure, that don't get reported, but they're reporting them now on their website. There was just another one out of California in uh, early January, I think it was. So it's crazy. So that, that company is, um, is a, a nonprofit and we have partnered with them. UOCA has partnered with them. So that information is on our UOCA website to link over to theirs if you guys are interested. Sorry, I don't want to get off on a weird tangent. Just thought I would mention that since it was brought up. So. I think it's weird. I support you on that. Absolutely. Sure. Well, it does go hand in hand with abatements and even our job in general. People don't like being told what to do or not do on their property. So. Yeah, yeah they, they, they show. They showed some really interesting videos. Uh, there was one in particular that it was the officer did not do what she needed to do right up front, but it was it was crazy to see the guy go from not really irritated, just more confused as to why somebody would approach him, to he's flipping out and going for the for the officer's gun. I mean, it would just happen about ten seconds. He he just flipped the switch and. It was, it was crazy, so. They also have a good resource. Maybe we talk about this next time that we're getting into safety stuff, but they have a good resource for uh, asking your department for any safety equipment. So I recently just did that with the county and they don't have hardly any funds to do so, but they have a great resource on, they do grants for vests and stuff like that. So, and they are more than willing to help you guys. They've helped me out a lot. So just throwing that out there, but maybe we contact them for next month's for safety stuff. I don't know, do that. <clears throat> I, I, I've been communicating with, oh, what is his name, their president. I can ask them if they'd be willing to come up with something or give us a condensed version or something if you want for next meeting. Maybe. Does yeah. anyone have, um, sorry, does anyone have any other abatement questions while we're still on that 
I was just going to ask for um, whoever does the RFPs or, or requests, you know, who, who draws those up. And if you guys have a copy of them, if you can send me anything that I can give to our county, that'd be great. Trisha, put your email address, address in chat so that people can send you that information. Perfect. So I, I haven't really run across it, but I'm just sitting here thinking. So when it comes to larger vehicles, RVs and things like that, that have to be abated, removed from property, whatever. So I think it was, Randy, did you say that you guys do, like you put them at the top of the rotation, then the tow truck companies for the next couple of times around? And does that actually work? Or how else can you compel It's still in somebody? process. We're still, it's still an experimental thing. We're far enough, we've, uh, we're not far enough to say yes, it's working or no, it's not. Uh, Christina, you might be able to address that better than I am. The, the main issue uh, to woo them is to give them chances on the police rotation. So that's what we did. Most of our vehicle of abatements are on, off public street, not private. So, uh, but I mean, the state code allows for private tow too for trespass. Um, but what, what we've done is say, you know, we go through uh, what the police rotation has, we go down the list and if they're all unavailable or don't have room or whatever excuse they give, then we go to other tow companies that aren't on our police rotation. And if those other tow companies step up and say, yeah, I'll take your motor home for you, then dispatch is informed that that company gets the next three police call outs for whatever, traffic accidents, uh, disabled vehicle, uh, state impound, whatever it may be, DUI, whatever, the, that company who hasn't ever had a chance to police tow gets three right away. So that it kind of offers the costs that they're gonna incur to tow that motorhome, store it until they can get a junk permit and dispose of it by having those insurance tows, the police tows where they get other funds. So that we're having some success. It's not a perfect system because some companies are like, three's not enough. <laughs> So it's hard to make everyone happy. I, I think I've actually kind of locked out. Reason enough. Sorry. That's the general feedback, just that they want more shots at that top slot. Yeah, they want the premium toes because the motorhomes are so expensive to deal with. Right. Right. Okay. I don't have anything else. Guys, if you guys uh, that have um, policies and procedures for, for the abatements, would you check your chat and grab those emails? There's actually a couple who would like a copy of what your city does, uh, if you don't mind sending that to them. Our, our system is changing with me leaving. So they're going to uh, go under, instead of the police department, they're gonna go under uh, planning and zoning. So I'm not sure what's gonna happen. I can't say just anything on that. Let me just say before I hang up, I have another meeting I gotta get to, to to get out of here, so to speak. Uh, I've really enjoyed being a member of UOCA and being with the board over the past too long of a time <laughs> because of COVID. But uh, believe me, uh, working with Bruce and Christine and Randy and uh, Mark, everybody, Brad, uh, has been fantastic. And I really want to thank each and every one of you for everything you do for the organization. Uh, I would like to do more, but it, my time is uh, on and I'll be, be moving on. But nevertheless, I think you guys are great. And I'm really happy I got to work with all of you.
Thank you. Good luck to you, Kurt. We we wish you the best and we'll miss you. Yeah, good luck, Kurt. Randy. Yes. Don't forget to go to the uh, West Valley shoots, okay? All right, I'll do that. All right. That's where we get to have lunch and tell a bunch of uh, old stories. And I know you have a few. Mine are so old, I've forgotten them. <laughs> no, I remember you crashing your car in Midvale. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Everybody has to hear that one. I remember your car sinking into a sinkhole as well, where you where we stopped your car at the end of a pursuit, and then uh, you hit the wire fire the fire hydrant, and it, all the water came out and sunk you into a sinkhole. That was that was really fun, watching your car go down. Uh, you know, I didn't tell your story though. <laughs> Randy, that is no, no Randy time left meeting. Got to go. Drove off of a loading dock, four feet off the ground. <laughs> Just nonchalantly driving around <laughs> anyway great being around each and every one of you we'll see you now bye thanks Kurt. take care bye bruce bye uh everyone else the the poll that got sent out about next month's meeting because of the holiday looks like we're going to delay it a week so it'll be tuesday september 14th that we'll do next month's meeting and uh, with Kurt retiring, we have vacancies in the board. So if anyone would like to help us, uh, we would sure appreciate some help. And uh, you can email anyone on the board your interest. So please help us. Were there any other questions before we wrap up? We might go ahead and just end a little early if we don't have any other questions. I just have one more question uh, with abatements. Um, I'm I'm curious if or how many do bids every time they do an abatement versus having a like a set fee schedule. I, I believe it's Ogden City has has a set fee schedule with the people that do abatements for them, so it goes off a just a planned rate. And I'm wondering if there are more cities that use that or if it's all just a case by case bid process. San, Sandy City has a, uh, it's part of the, our bid with our contract. It's a set fee it's based on time, obviously, but there's a set fee. Um, I'm pretty sure South Salt Lake does bids. They do like bid of three or five or something, if I remember right. Yeah, we've, we've been doing three bids. Um, for whatever reason, uh, because maybe it was because of COVID, we were only getting one response. So one guy was really reaping the benefits there for a little bit. Um, but it wasn't for lack of trying. Yeah, that, that's what Saratoga told me to do was attempt to get three, but don't spend too much time on it. Call around to five, six, seven different places, see who's willing, get as many as you can, try for three. But with this one, we I think we got finally got three. But We have any other questions or comments? All right, well, we're gonna go ahead and wrap up Yoka's meeting this month and next month will be a week delayed, September 14th. Uh, we'll be sending out an email with topic and speaker very soon. Thank you all for attending. Hey, Christine, I have a card for you still. I know, I'll, I'll get with you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Get with me on that, and then I'll be out of town at our next meeting. So, uh, okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Have a great day. Bye.